Keith Haring was one of the most influential street artists of the 1980s, and now his story is being told in a new biography called Radiant, The Life and Line of Keith Haring. The author, Brad Gooch, joins me now. Good morning. Hi, good to see you. You too. So why did you decide to write this book? Well, I think it began because I was in the East Village in 1978 mm. when Keith arrived in New York. He was at First Avenue and First Street. I was on Bleecker and Bowery. And I would first see his work, begin to see his work around. And I would see the crawling babies yes. and the barking dogs. And um, at first, I think, in Soho on a <laughs> newsstand. And then he started this amazing project of drawing in the subways. He did over 5,000 chalk drawings wow. on those black mats where they would put advertisements. So even though he was a kid in art school, he suddenly had this audience of millions of people. He kind of went around the gallery system and got his audience directly on the street. And that was kind of a trademark of Keith's. And I would intersect with him personally a little bit mm -hmm. and see him around with his fabulous posse. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And you know, for some of the younger viewers who might not be familiar with Keith Haring and his work, tell us more about him and you know, even your interactions with him, I'm curious. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, they, my, mine were, uh, I came to a book party that mm -hmm. we gave at Limelight and, um, but, but mainly that the, when my lover, Howard Bruckner, was mm -hmm. ill towards mm -hmm. the end of his life with AIDS, Keith characteristically gave money for his care. Mm. And I remember him at Howard's funeral sort of standing in the back looking spooked because he, Keith was within a year of his own death from AIDS at age 31. So uh -huh. all this was happening when everyone was very young. I think the main message of Keith and why people know him now and where his clothes on the street mm -hmm. is because he was into this idea of art for everybody mm. and the subway project was doing art for anyone who was riding the subway he did he started something called the pop shop I don't, um, in Broadway in Soho where he would sell at the same time now his works were selling in galleries for thousands of dollars he was then had a store where he sold t-shirts and pins and prints to, that everyone could to everybody. Afford. That's so that, terrific. That, that was his big project, along with his kind of activism on certain issues. Like so, so what was the research and uh, writing process like? I mean, I heard it involved 200 people. I did interview over 200 people, wow. which, which is great. I mean, it's like making a documentary. You mm -hmm. want to have more angles on the, on the scene. And a lot of people who've never been interviewed about Keith, but went to School of Visual mm. Arts with him, um, have these fascinating stories, funny stories, and no one has ever heard them. So they did that. I also went to the foundation, which is in his old studio on Broadway, and Keith was very bio-prepared, so he kept everything. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, if you want to see Keith Herring's Con Edison bill from 1979, <laughs> you, you, you have can. it, right? Like, Brad, thank you so much for being right. here, and congratulations on the wonderful book. Great. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. And Radiant is available now wherever books are sold. We'll be right back.